Hello again, and welcome back to the channel, and thank you for all the comments I've been getting recently. So as many of you have requested, I am today putting together a video on how to do a titration for flow cytometry. Now as you can tell, I'm not in the lab. This will be a kitchen titration using water and soy sauce. Uh, but it will give you a good visual representation of how a titration works and what the gradient of dilution will look like in something you can actually see. So for the first step of my titration, I'm going to set my pipette to whatever volume I want to have in my sample in the end. So today I want to add 100 microliters of volume onto my cell, so I'm going to start with 100 microliters. And pipette 100 microliters of my staining buffer into each of my tubes. And there we have it, staining buffer added. So for today's purposes, I'm going to start with a one and two dilution, just because visually it'll be easier for you to see what's happening with my soy sauce. However, in your lab, a one and two dilution as a starting point would be kind of high and very expensive. So I would recommend looking at your manufacturer sheet for your antibody, seeing what their recommended concentration is, and then starting a little bit more concentrated than that. So if say they recommend a one in 100, I'd probably start my dilution with a one in 50. So let's get adding our soy sauce. So for a one in two, I'm going to add then the same volume, 100 microliters of my soy sauce into my first tube. And in here, I'm going to mix to pipette. And in here, I'm going to pipette to mix. <laughs> so once you have everything evenly mixed, because I'm doing a one and two dilution series, I'm gonna pull out 100 microliters, take that into my next tube. Same thing, mix, remove 100 microliters, and go into my next tube. And etc. etc. all the way down your dilution series. And then your final tip, you can just get rid of. So, you can see here, from most concentrated to least concentrated, you have a decreasing volume of soy sauce in each tube. So at this point, I would then take my diluted samples and go and add these to my cells for my cell staining. So as you can see today, I did my titration over eight samples. Now it's important to note that the more samples you have, the more accurate a curve you're going to get. I know a lot of the times people like to cut this short and only do three or four titrations and pick from that, and you might end up in an okay place. However, by having more samples, you're going to get a better curve and therefore a better representation of your best concentration. It's also important to note that doing this with more samples the first time will save you reagent because you only add antibody into the first sample. So if you cut your first titration short and have to repeat it, you're going to end up using twice as much antibody as you would have if you'd just done the whole eight course or six the first time. So at this point, after adding your antibody onto your samples and running through your staining protocol, you then acquire your samples on the cytometer and then analyze your data like we did in the Flojo titration video, which I'll link to up in the top there. So thanks again for all your comments and all your engagement. I look forward to more requests and we'll see you in the next one.